So here's Kim Silvio's response letter to Lord Evans' warning letter. You can notice some of the information has been redacted. Dear Mr. References made to your correspondence dated March the 7th, 2022, confirming that you have been engaged to provide representation to Mr. Lord Evans. I note the following. Mr. Evans' lawful name is James Lord Evans. Our telephone conversation on March 10th, 2022 at approximately 9 a.m. Croatian time to your mobile phone. Your advice to me to contact your office and speak to Luca Munerick. As he has been handling this case, I made four attempts to contact Mr. Munerick for both provided office telephone numbers. However, did not receive any response, could not leave a message, and did not receive a return phone call. All attempts were made between 9.15 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Thursday, March 11, 2022, Croatian time. Mr. Munerich is listed as a trainee lawyer, translation from Croatian, and undertook the role of sending your letter via email on March 8, 2022. The correspondence sent to me via email is unsigned and does not indicate any correspondence or communication should be made with Mr. Munerich. The correspondence attached to the email indicates that the correspondence is from you and that you are the author of this document. Your letter makes some very serious allegations. For ease, I have itemized and respond as follow. Number one, that I presented and made public a series of false insulting and defamatory allegations about Mr. Evans, for which allegations you have absolutely no evidence. This allegation is false. I made disclosures through a subreddit post, hereafter referred to as a statement, on January 31st, 2022. This subreddit post was removed by the moderators of the subreddit within approximately one hour of the statement being posted. I have attached a copy of the statement to the letter for your convenience. The statement disclosed the following facts. Statement. Some weeks back, Lord openly and without warning notified me of his infidelity and engagement with prostitutes on a very regular basis over many years amongst other matters that don't need to be specifically mentioned. The statement was made based on the following facts. A. Mr. Evans disclosed information to me and a third party producer, Bob, pseudonym, in December 2021. The identification of producer Bob is known by Mr. Evans, he also being aware of reasons necessitating the identification of this person remaining private. B. This claim was confirmed by Mr. Evans, referencing the video, Everything You Don't Need to Know About My Private Life on YouTube, here and after referred to as the video. Statement, the Lord has been in Thailand making use of many different facilities and getting to know the locals and other tourists since shortly after Christmas, only returning to Croatia a few days ago. Reference paragraph 5 of the statement. The statement was made based on the following facts. A. Mr. Evans was in Thailand in the time frame specified in the statement. B. I am in possession of sufficient WhatsApp messages and photographs that clearly demonstrate that Mr. Evans was utilizing different facilities and getting to know the locals during the specified period. Mr. Evans confirms in the video that he returned from Thailand on the 19th of January, 2022. Statement. Lord's subscribers, support team, and patrons are not being given the correct information. This statement was made based on the following facts. A. I have WhatsApp messages and documents that clearly demonstrate that Mr. Evans decided to go to Thailand prior to December 16, 2021, as he was upset with his wife. 
The reason he was upset with her related to the fact that initially his wife had agreed to participate in an exclusive non-monogamous relationship. However, upon a short period of reflection, a day or so, decided that she did not wish to be in this type of a relationship. Mr. Evans was infuriated and determined that he needed to get away from her as it is a head freak that she changed her mind. In addition to the evidence in my possession, Mr. Evans states several times during the video that the reason for the need for his break was due to the issues relating to his marriage. Statement. Use of funding generated through his activism work to pay for prostitution an industry known for the exploitation of women and minors. This statement was made based on the following facts. A. Mr. Evans has on several occasions, dating back to 2015, confirmed his income sources on various social media outlets. A post in 2015 by Mr. Evans confirmed that I have Google ads on my website, PayPal, and I have a Patreon button at the end of my videos for people who want to donate to my work. B. Mr. Evans also stated that any proceeds from Google Ads impressions, 125 per month, YouTube Ads impressions, 110 per month, on regular donations, 63 per month, get plowed straight into my business to help pay for new equipment and justify the considerable time spent away from my regular job translating and proofreading while doing research and producing content. For example, my two-hour rebuttal video for Jared Loach, Jehovah Witness Broadcasting episode took three days to put together, which would be hard to justify if it wasn't part of my job. C. In 2021, a user asked a question to the JW Watch subreddit asked the question in relation to Mr. Evans' Patreon and the need for it given his income from Google Ads and the sales from his literature. Reference, Patreon and money, jwwatchreddit.com. Mr. Evans clearly indicates in the above in his response to the question confirming that he has four main streams of revenue. Number one, Patreon pledges. Number two, YouTube ad revenue. Number three, Teespring. Number four, Amazon royalties from JW Book Sales. D. Mr. Evans confirms that the revenue streams, Patreon and YouTube, make up the bulk of, and the Patreon is most of the reliable since YouTube has historically been problematic. E. Mr. Evans confirms that the money gets churned mostly into number one wages number two equipment number three service subscriptions and fees number four travel costs number five other business expenses f mr evans confirms if there is money left over at the end of the month this gets turned back into the company so that we can plan for future projects g Mr. Evans confirms that he is professional, full-time, ex-Jehovah Witness writer and activist. His pledge to Patreon backers being that Patreon money all goes towards keeping me involved in the important work of churning out content. H. Mr. Evans' confirmation that his income is derived solely through sources generated through his activism work. Given this fact... Any prostitution could only have been paid for through income derived through his activism work. I. I would think it unnecessary to provide evidence that the sex worker industry is the industry known for the exploitation of women and minors. If this fact is in dispute, I would be more than happy to provide particulars in relation to the, this item. Statement. Lord has shouted down other activists, members of the community for not agreeing with him, or as a result of him somehow convincing others that on every single occasion he is questioned, he is the victim. How many activists have stopped their efforts? How many people have been silenced? 
This statement was made based on the following facts. A. I am in possession of five affidavit statements sworn by individuals from varying countries who identified as activists against the Jehovah Witness organization. B. These individuals have deposed such that would support this fact. C. There are current examples available within the community that would also be relied upon as evidence. Mr. Evans has notified his patrons on or around the date of this letter that 10 letters to 12 individuals have been sent out like this letter I received. D. As has been demonstrated and will continue to be demonstrated throughout this correspondence to you, Mr. Evans has no basis to be declaring that I made false claims against him, nor have I committed a crime. Such claims have been made by Mr. Evans on several occasions. Number one, you continued with the above mentioned defamation campaign via the social network YouTube live stream, the Lord Evans rebuttal video hearing Kim Silvio's side from February the 4th. 2022, as well as a live stream, a conversation with Kim Silvio from February the 20th, 2022, in which occasions you also made a number of unfounded, fabricated, and constructed allegations about Mr. Evans. A. I have undertaken a thorough review of the above reference videos, reference so-and-so, and cannot identify any defamatory material in either video. B. Please provide specific allegations and evidence, timestamps, to me in order that I can further consider this allegation. C. Until such time as further specific allegations and evidence is provided in relation to this allegation, I rely upon my review of each video as evidence to demonstrate that no unfounded, fabricated, or constructed allegations about Mr. Evans was made or published by me. Number two, through your YouTube profile on a daily basis, you publish and transmit false and defamatory information about Mr. Evans with the clear aim of harming Mr. Evans. A. I have undertaken a thorough review of the above referenced social media platform and cannot identify any false or defamatory information published by me or transmitted by me. B. Please provide specific allegations and evidence to me in order that I can further consider this allegation. C. Until such time as further specific allegations and evidence is provided in relation to this allegation, I rely upon my review of my Twitter account as evidence to demonstrate that I have not published or transmitted false or defamatory information about Mr. Evans. 3. You publish or transmit false and defamatory information about Mr. Evans with the clear aim of harming Mr. Evans. A. I have undertaken a thorough review of all social media platforms. YouTube, and any other information that could be deemed as published material and cannot identify any false or defamatory information published by me or transmitted by me. B. Please provide specific allegations and evidence to me in order that I can further consider this allegation. C. Until such time as further specific allegations and evidence is provided in relation to this allegation, I rely upon my review as evidence to demonstrate that I have not published or transmitted false and defamatory information about Mr. Evans. D. I note the absence of any reference to a statement issued by me on the 15th of February 2022 in which I clearly state that any reports or allegations of child sexual abuse should be reported to the statutory authorities and that I had no knowledge of any allegations against Mr. Evans and the matter has been referred to the authorities and that the determination of the authorities should be the only opinion sought. E. 
This information is relevant as clearly if my aim was to harm Mr. Evans, I would not seek to comment in his favor. I provide a copy of this statement for your reference. 4. Finally, we would like to point out that there is reasonable suspicion that there are elements of several criminal deeds in your conduct. In particular, the criminal deed of insult prescribed by Article 147 of the Criminal Code of the Republic of Croatia, as well as the criminal deed of defamation prescribed by Article 149 of the Criminal Code, and in case you do not act in accordance with the request of Mr. Evans stated above, we will be persuaded to in initial all legal actions prescribed by law for the sake of protection and Mr. Evans' rights and interests, which including initiating criminal proceedings. I do not agree that I have committed any offense pursuant to the legislation prescribed above for the following reasons. A. I have not insulted, defamed, participated in, or orchestrated a defamation campaign against Mr. Evans. B. I have not fabricated or constructed untruthful or unfounded allegations against Mr. Evans. C. I have not unlawfully violated Mr. Evans or his family's rights of personality. D. A public interest disclosure where proven conflict of interests are highlighted in this correspondence is protected by law. Now response. Number one, notwithstanding the above reasons, the reference legislation does not apply to me as an alien resident of the Republic of Croatia. I am an Australian citizen and permanently reside in Australia. Number two, I have never visited Croatia, therefore could not have committed any such offenses in Croatia. Number three, as I understand the reference legislation, the only legal avenue for a criminal proceeding in Croatia in respect to an alien of Croatia who has committed the alleged offenses would be through the statutory authorities. Or, I assert that you, on behalf of Mr. Evans, have no legal right to suggest that there is reasonable suspicion that there are an element of several criminal deeds having been committed by me. Assessment of the facts relating to criminal offenses allegedly committed aliens of Croatia can only be made by the statutory authorities of Croatia. Number five, I assert that you, on behalf of Mr. Evans, are irresponsible in making any suggestions that a criminal offense has occurred. Number six, Mr. Evans has full knowledge of the evidence that is available. Accordingly, I consider the actions he has instructed in relation to this matter to be completely frivolous and extortionate. Number seven, the commencement of legal proceedings in accordance with the allegations being made by Mr. Evans has no reasonable prospect of success given the evidence that is known to him. Therefore, I can only consider ulterior motives for the actions taken by Mr. Evans. Number eight, I assert my belief that Mr. Evans' behavior is extortionate as he has full knowledge that I have not committed an offense against him. Therefore, his actions can only be viewed as an attempt to obtain funds through an unfounded and vexatious means. Number 9. I assert my belief that Mr. Evans' behavior is continually informing members of the public of criminal and defamatory conduct towards him and me is defamatory and a breach of my rights of personality. Number 10. Mr. Evans has disclosed and published a far superior quantity of information that he considers private to the public arena through his extensive social media and YouTube platforms than anyone else that I have observed in the past months. Number 11. The evidence provided clearly allows me to conclude that I have not committed any offense against Mr. Evans. Number 12. I can confirm that I have no intention of complying with your request to removal all materials published so far on social networks. Number 13. I can confirm that I have no intention of issuing an apology, public or private, as I have no cause to do so. Number 14. 
I can confirm that I have no intention of retracting any statements made in relation to Mr. Evans as he has confirmed the factual nature of all the statements made. Number 15. I can confirm that I have no intention of paying the funds suggested in your letter as I have not violated the rights of personality of Mr. Evans nor any member of his family. I hereby respectfully request the following. Number one that you explain the legal definition of defamation to Mr. Evans. Number two, that Mr. Evans cease making public claims that directly or through inference claim that I have committed a criminal or civil offense against him. Number three, that written confirmation of receipt of this correspondence, provision of any evidence available as specified in this correspondence, and your client's intentions giving consideration to the information provided to you. Sincerely, Kim Silvio.